So, man, what's up, Tim? Man, how you doing, D? It's good to, you know, link up with you, baby. Oh, for sure, man. You know, uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about, well, first, introduce you. Uh, we have Coach Tim Ford, uh, trainer, uh, influencer, role model, uh, coach for TJ Ford Basketball, and, uh, and a dog lover. You know, oh, yeah. You know, at, of course, I have for sure has his own kennel. So we'll, we'll get into all of that. But, man, I just wanted to, wanted to catch up with you briefly, man. And I'm starting a little series. I'm going to call it Quarantine Convos. <laughs> real stuff. That's real right there. You know what I'm saying? So just trying to catch up, catch up with some people, man. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you was available and free to, to talk to us, man. I'm, I'm glad to have you on. Welcome. Appreciate you having me, man. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you giving the platform out for people like myself that's in the AU world. Uh, the bigger guys get the platform a lot. I think the smaller guys, as far as like the trainers, the influencers, the mentors, sometimes we don't get the voice that we need to, you know, to get the message out that we have to get from the ground up. Because I think that before it's the NBA players, college players, high school players, it starts with the YMCA League, the Stafford League, it starts, you know, at the bottom. So I think it's good that you let Letting us get that voice out, so we can help the youth from the from the bottom all the way What I mean, that's and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about, man. Is in this situation that we're in, is it's weird and crazy for everybody on all different levels, you know. Uh, and and we're just we're talking from a, from from a basketball perspective, and so we know about you know the NBA. NBA is kind of still suspended; hasn't been canceled yet. Or we don't know if it's going to resume. We know all about that, and you know everyone's anxious and hoping that that can resume and come back soon. But you know it's up in the air, and we know that college basketball was you know indefinitely canceled. You know, in in the midst of the best part of the college basketball season, you know, the most anticipated part of the season is like you got you get so it was I know it was a huge letdown. I really was. I mean, for, for, you know, across the board, he was let down across the board, you know, for on both sides, you know, for men right. and women. Uh, but what, what we haven't heard from a lot is, is the grassroots, the grassroots level of, of basketball or sports, you know, particularly basketball being that the springtime was going to be, be the beginning of, you know, AAU starting up and high school teams that made it to state uh, we're going to finish up their season, trying to compete for a state championship, and then go on to start AAU season. I want to talk to you a little bit about that, man, and your feelings about, you know, you being a coach, you having a team, you starting your own team, you knowing players that, that need this time, this summertime and these live periods to either get, it, get one offer or to improve their chances of getting a better offer because they've gotten better throughout the year. So I, I want to talk to you a little bit, a little, a little about that with you. Okay, the first thing is, let's go. It's, it's steps to it because what it hurt was if you was in the eighth grade, and you was preparing to go to high school, right? If you was, if you was eleventh grade or senior, you was preparing yourself to go to college. So at each level, you got people that's in the elementary going to, to middle school. So each level is a setback because everybody using the summer to evaluate and get better to see where they at. So it trickles down all the way all the way down to the younger kids. Where the problem comes in is that the kids that's unsigned seniors, it, it's really it's really it's it's bad because they lose their time to either they can rise their stock, right? Or they can or they can honestly realize that basketball is not for them, right? So they had a good two and a half months to see whether they need to try to pursue basketball or whether they need to do other things. But now that's being strict now we have to find other ways, such as social media. You know, you got to try to push your kids without content. And most coaches, like myself, that's been doing it for a while, you should have a black book or a book of a list of coaches that you've already had, you know, you can send this prior. And that's when we come to – and it's very important that when you send kids to a school that they do good because for times like this, I can call and say, well, I got some players that's on the board that you might need to look at. Well, it would look better if those kids that I sent there before – have done well, you know what I mean? So that's why we always say you have to be, you have to look uh, not just for yourself, but for others when you're preparing and you're going somewhere because what you do can hurt the others coming behind you. So to me, this is a bit, it's very tough. 
but it's also shown us about everything that we've taught kids about going to school, getting education, because just look at how many kids might not get a scholarship or might have to take a different direction. So you just like, like we always tell them, you never know when this is one of those times. So I think it's tough for everybody involved, but we have to just improvise and, and do what we can. Well, I mean, definitely it, a lot of improv, a lot, a lot of improvising, man. A lot, like everybody, like I said, across across all platforms, uh, no matter if you're rich, poor, you know, in between, black, white, Asian, like yeah, everybody's improvising right now, right? Uh, just you know, in real life situations, and like I said, we just talking about basketball, we just talking about sports, which is it's important, but it's not as important as you know as the as the overall situation that we're that we're dealing with. But man, like for that, like you said, for that high school senior who might not have had a scholarship or for that kid who was on the brink of having a breakout summer, was kind of, you know, kind of borderline, like, all right, well, man, I need to see him this summer, man. Like, you know, you look good in high school, but I need to see him play, you know, play some competition nationally and, and see if he really can hold his own. Like how, how do you feel that that really hurts? These, these, this situation really hurts that type of uh, situation. I think, I think it really hurts kids that might have played on high school teams that didn't get the exposure, so they're waiting on the summer to get those matchups that they need to they either show up there to drop or where they located it. They make high major, low major, JUCO, NAI, you know. Um, this is what hurts because you don't get those, those grinds and you don't get to go out of town and, and see those battles, so it really hurts those guys. Not only that is, over the summer, it's just not about playing games. It's about preparing the kids. A lot of these kids don't just play AAU. They, they actually physically train. They do other things to their body. So while we've been on quarantine, they can do much as they can, but they've been stripped from the way they've been normally been training, right? So let's just say we, if it comes back in two months or a month, three months, all these kids are going to be physically behind like anybody else that's sitting out. You know what I mean? You can only work so much at home. You can only work so much. You still have to play the game of basketball. So with that, without this four months or three or four months, a lot of kids are not going to get better. Their progression would not probably been as good as it's been. And just think about, we think about basketball, but we don't think about, man, these kids not getting to go strong. You know, they're not, they not getting a lot of stuff that's memorable, you know. And a lot of these, a lot of these people, are, our kids already got their future planned out so it's like you can't remind it you know time is the time is gone you know so it's it's just not affecting basketball it's affecting us as a whole you know what i mean man yeah now you're right man like for the kids that, that's in school like you said you just mentioned kids missing prom uh for for the high school for the for the seniors in high school and in college you, you know you're not you're missing the graduation ceremony no i mean like you said though these are memorable important moments for a lot of people man and uh you say you can't rewind this time and get this time back it's un like it's unfortunate uncharted territories that we've never experienced uh but you know it's we all are dealing with it you know some some True. worse than others uh but we're all are dealing with it we're all having to make like you said have to have to make adjustments on the fly and from a basketball perspective, like yeah, it's it's been a big impact. It's been a it's been a big effect on you know on the basketball community. Not like I said, we we hear and, and we see what's going on in the NBA, and that's getting talked about just about every day. Of, you know the possibilities of when that's coming back, but we we're not we're not hearing a lot about the grassroots level and you know the impact that the coronavirus is having on these kids' future. Uh, who some 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 of these kids' futures are in, you know are. Uh, basically, was was going to be determined by you know what type of summer they had. Some kids, some kids in limbo. Some kids on the rise. Some kids declining. A lot of people got a lot of question marks on certain players. In every city, no matter where you go, where you look at, every player is under scrutiny. So everybody want to see what you've done latest. So as for everybody involved, including NBA players, the last time we seen them play is going to be months ago, right? So here's what the time. Gonna see who's actually been at home working on the little things that they can work on, right? With the times that we all tell kids, you can work on your ball at home, right? You can work on your, you can work on your push-ups, you can work on running, you can work on certain things that you can do, and you will see the kids that took this time to prepare to get their bodies together, not just with basketball, but their bodies. A lot of kids have to get their mental, you know, mental state 
is something that we don't talk about, right? So if you just think about how fast life going for us, it's every day you got to on social media, right? Just gave us a little time to go down, spend time with our family, and really think about what we got going on. Because right now, man, you been thinking about it about today and said that there'll be no more school in Fort Bend, right, for the rest of the year, right? So, I mean, what happens now that the people can go to school from home and it can be effective? Do, do, do they stay doing this for a long period of time? Does this switch up stuff in the future? We really don't know. Yeah, we really don't, man. It's a lot of uncertainties. Like I said, it's a lot of uncertainties about life going forward. Uh, and, you know, it's, like I said, it's uncharted, it's uncharted waters for everybody. And things are changing daily. New information. We, we're still waiting on. We're still waiting on to figure out exactly what, what, what the coronavirus actually is doing to people's bodies once they have it. And you know, you know all the. We don't even have all the details on on the actual virus, and you know how it's really affecting and what is really attacking uh, the people who contract it. But on a more lighter note, man. <clears throat> so how do you feel? You talked a little bit about what kids could be doing in this time that they have off. Uh, I mean, what, what do you, I mean, with the limited, with the limited things that they can do, what, what do you think is the best way for them to prepare for, uh, prepare themselves basketball wise to be better? I know you mentioned, uh, you, know, you uh, mentioned. The thing, to me, I mean, you know, as we know, we can't be going outside and doing uh, all these different sorts of things. We, we supposed to be quarantined. And so in my opinion, I put up a post today um, you can study numerous point guards or whatever position you play. Um, we all got our phones in our hands. We all can use our phones to study um, the players that we like. Uh, I think we can – we all got this internet. Use it as a tool. So you can pick your best five point guards, study their game. I'm pretty sure they got interviews out there. You can pick their mind state, do a little research on the players you like, look at the moves, visualize the moves. You can even crop the moves. You got the phone. I see them do TikToks and they do all that stuff. Maybe they should screenshot all the moves that they're trying to perfect and mentally start preparing themselves that way. I same thing that everybody that's played basketball looked at somebody before them. I mean, you can pick a player. Um, you, TJ's yourself, y'all was from this city. Um, they can look at what y'all did to be successful. They can hit y'all on the inbox. They can hit various guys. That, when you when you reach out to somebody, you really want some real information. People know what you want, and, and when you're seeking it, they'll give it to you. Um, just like the, when we had Jabari Rice seeking out information, I think that more kids need to be like Jabari Rice that uh, will just seek out information or uh, Robinson that will just seek out the information to see what's good, what's bad, or just to get your insight on it. Even though that you might not change their mind, you might just give them another way of thinking about it. But I think that guys just got to use these, these tools to help them. And I think the internet is one. I know a lot of guys are doing workouts. I know they got workouts on anywhere on the internet that you can use. I think that use what's best for you. I think that kids should not work on things that they do. Even though we got to work on all, all things, try to work on your weaknesses more than the things that you do well. You know what I mean? Well, you know, this goes back to when we was when we grew up, bro. Like, now it's time to see who really can be creative, right? Like when we grew right. up, it wasn't we didn't have all the training. Like we you know when we when we wanted to hoop, we had to go outside and try to find a hoop game, which you know they can't kids can't do now considering the situation. But going outside was a way to all right. We go out, whether we had a hoop, whether we had a goal or not, we went outside. We shot on the roof, shot against the house, or whatever the case may be. And we like you said, we visualized and we was creative and and imagining being Jordan or whoever you know what I'm saying, whoever the case may be. Like we was outside trying to be creative. And just doing moves in the driveway or whatever the case may be, working on your ball handling up and down the street. You know, like these are things right. we, we had we things we had to do the hard, you know, more more the hard way to 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 work on our game to perfect our craft at, you know in our game. And I think like this is this is kind of reverting back to that, like, okay, we can't really get to the gyms, we can't use the state of the art equipment and all this stuff because you know the gyms are closed. Fitness places are closed for you know for actual training and all this, but you know you still do have the little things around your house or whatever can or, you know around your around your area that you can like I said up and down the street you could be just dribbling up and down your street, working on your handles whatever in your driveway shooting the ball up against the you know against the house. Uh, Correct. What you know whatever you find some way. Yeah, like 
I mean, it's, it's like I said, everything is about imp imp improvising now and, and figuring out the best way to be productive, you know, in, in, in the time frame that, that you feel you need to, to get it done. I think that's I think that's the main thing is is now it's like everybody stripped down to being at home and it's like when we was young that's all we had was the you know the driveway the basketball and the dog you know your mom might yell at you to stay out the grass or whatever but we played basketball that's what we did we, and right now you can't do it. you can get on the phone with your teammates you know you got your summer team y'all got group texts y'all gotta push each other you know. Um, so when your time do come, because if, if we do get to play, like you said, it, it, it starts immediately. And, you know, and people are not going to be like, oh, you got this, this curve, this curve is, is that's how the world is. It's no, it's no excuses. So the best way to do is just be more physically fit the best way you can, you know. And I think that's the best we can do. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these kids better better get better get used to doing Oh, 25 push-ups, 50 push-ups a night. I mean, like go, like they said, old, like the old school way, man, get get your 50 to 100. I mean, however, like get your 50 crunches in the night or whatever, like old school, man, like get to get your pull-up game on, like whatever, like it, we got it. Like these kids going to have to get back to that. And, and even some of these pros, because not all of hey, – just to go to the pro levels, not all these pros have access to the things that we think they might have access to because not everyone lives in lives in their own home. Like, if you're in a big city like New York, a lot of guys might live in, in apartment buildings. So, you know, how, how do they get their work in? The, the, the site is like, it's like life have a way of, you know, everybody equal at this point. Everybody got to improvise, you know. Everybody got to do the small things now. No matter what level you are in life, you got to go back to the small things. You got to pull them two basketballs back out. You got to pull jump rope back out. You know what I mean? You got to lay back in your bed and shoot the ball and make sure you form good and the rotation good now. You got to go back to all the old things. It's just, it's just what we got to do now. <laughs> you know, you used to do that until you used to do it and make sure you lay in the same spot. Do it to the hurt. I mean, you got to you gotta visualize. When you being good is something that you visualize, you know? So I think that a lot of uh, it's been stripped from us. And I think it's broad when this come back. Everybody will cherish the things that we have been taking away, right? Uh, most people. Like, yeah. like we think about it, we can't even go to a movie with our family right now. We can't go to an amusement park. We can't do this, these little things now. So when all they come back, everybody can cherish a little bit more. You're going to cherish going to that high school championship. You're going to cherish going to that college game. You're going to cherish going when you get that NBA ticket on, you know, some games. But I'll go tomorrow. Those times are going to change because you're going to cherish with that moment because it's been taken away, you know? Yeah, you you're right, man. I think it, it's the time we in gives a lot of people, gives everybody a uh, time to reflect on, you know, on what's what's most important and to get some stuff in order and and to get, you know, what I'm saying to work on yourself, you know, what I'm saying to get some right. stuff better, to be better uh, when all this is over. You're not, and you know, every, everyone's situation is different, and and you know, everyone doesn't have the same amount of uh, free time. You know, we all have the time now, but you know, some people actually still have to work. But I still think we still have a lot of time where we can reflect and, and, and actually work on ourselves and mind, body, and spirit, you know, to be better uh, when we come out of this, man, however you see fit uh, at pursuing whatever, you know, whatever whatever you have been putting on the back burner. You know, a lot of us got things that we've been wanting to do that we've been putting on the back burner. So, oh, man, I'm going to do it next week. I'm going to do it next year. You know, I'm, I'm going to wait. You know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Wait. Now, I mean, now it's the time to, to pick up those things and, and try to, Get it at least get it going, you know, so so you can have some some uh, that you worked on during this time to try to be as productive as you can, and, and it's not easy, but you know that's I think that's the best way to try to get through it, man. To, you know, to take the time that you need to rest, but try to be productive, you know, and, and try to stay as active as possible uh, with the time that you have, man. you know. Uh, but man. Man, as much information as much information as you can. That's all you can do. Yeah, that too. That too. But so, uh, so man, so to kind of change gears, so the AAU season is is basically on hold. Uh, right. As of now, right? How many how many tournaments have have you got have has the AAU season missed as of now? As of today? I want to say I want to say three, maybe four, depending on how your schedule was. But the way I was the way that I was saying that we missed like four. Uh, before and I think the live period would have been coming up soon. So you got the live period coming up. 
The first just yeah. the first live period. Yeah, correct. So the first live yeah. period. Which which was which for seniors, it, it's to me I always in, in, in our program, and just to let you know, the unsigned seniors, I try to get them signed before the school is out. So that means meaning April is pretty much I'm trying to get them out of there by April, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this would have been the next this weekend coming up or the week coming up with a live period, that would have been a crucial week those players because I, I try to get those guys uh some a home so they know where they're going by the time they graduate. You know, you want you, when you graduate walk across the stage, you want to kind of know what's where you're headed. You know what I mean? So security. I, yeah, you want some security I, about your future. Yeah, for sure. So I mean that's added strength for guys that still was waiting, you know. So now it's it's like like I said, you go in that black book and you have your relationships, you know, and that goes back to picking the right team for, you know, there's a lot of good A you runs out there. You just pick the right one for you, your research and give and get with the program that fits your talent. You know what I mean? Every program is not uh every, every program is talent based, some talent based I'm not. And uh, sometimes I think guys they pick it over over the wrong things. You gotta go. It's like it's like shoes. You gotta pick the right shoe that fit. You know, even just like going to college, or nowadays these guys be picking what high school they go to. Yeah, yeah. It's real. real. At the same time, it's the decisions that you make, you live with them. So it's always good to make a good decision. Like everybody that's chose their AU programs. Now we're gonna get to see who can work. You know behind closed doors, who got relationships, and who can get it done in this time. This what this one you're going to see and who's going to put in the work, which I think is a lot of programs in Houston, across the state, across the country, that will be putting in work, then there's others. But just like any other uh, any other thing that you do, that's good and that's bad. So I know a lot of people say, well, they do this, they do that. In any industry that you're in, that's good, that's bad, you know? So you just look at it like this, get the right program, and uh, with, if, even if this didn't happen, say this didn't happen, you still got to pick the right program that's best fit for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Picking the right anything, man, that that school, like you said, school, whether it be, you know, for academics or athletics, pick, you know, trying to trying to choose the right jobs, you know, like all that stuff is, is a vital part of this. Basically, what type, how, what type of success you're going to be as, you know, having that, whatever, that, that setting. And uh, it's, it's very important, man, that, you know, for these kids to pick the right AAU teams uh, and not just based on, you know, who's the most popular, who has to, you know, who has the shoe deal, uh, who's going to be traveling this and that place. Yeah, that, that's all cool and well, you know, especially if you're going to be playing, uh, you know, uh, vital for that program and you're going to get significant minutes. But it doesn't do you any good if you're going to go play for such and such team that's playing and such and such platform and you just there and you just traveling all the time and you never get no playing time. That's not helping you develop as a player. It's not helping you, you know, get in, gain any experience or be seen by any coaches where you could be go to a less, just say a little lesser, a, a little lower level uh, team, uh, a lower level platform and have better chances of, you know, of, of developing your game, being seen and, you know, being able to show that you can play, uh, at the highest level that you know that you can perform at. Well, yeah, and you and you look at it like um, we always say. Uh, everybody, all kids or all coaches, and everybody say we want the opportunity. All you get is the opportunity, right? But the opportunity really doesn't matter if you're not capable of seizing the moment of the opportunity, or you're not capable of that opportunity. So every opportunity is not for every person. That makes sense. And make it exactly. So sometimes that opportunity is good, but that person might not be good for you. Vice versa. Sometimes we get caught up on looking at somebody else's opportunity, and that's not that that was meant for us. Everybody got their own opportunity in their own way. That doesn't mean we won't get to the top the same way. You know, some guys might some guys might play on an independent team and be an NBA player. Some guy might play on a circuit team and don't even get a college scholarship. Either way, you just never know. They, they got guys. They got guys that only played one year of basketball and made to college and played. Then they got some guys that's been going all across the country overseas to finally get a chance. You can't. There's many different books on being successful and getting to where you're trying to go. So 
Definitely. That's I mean, yeah, that's 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 good, man. Like everybody's path to success is different. Uh yeah, you just have to, you know, you have to find your path and, and ride your way. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to ride yeah. your own way to find your own path, man. And you know, and you know, if you do the right stuff, you work hard, you know, stay humble, you got the right support system, right people around you. You know, you're gonna for the most part, that that's pretty stuff that that's the that's the right intangible stuff that leads to, you know, success in, in the area and whatever you do. Uh, like I said, it, it starts with hard work and, you know, dedication that you put into whatever you're trying to accomplish. So like I said, everybody has a different path and have to ride their own way to figure out, you know, the best way to, to get to their destination of success. Uh, so with that, man, I, we know like, you know, it's been disappointing not to have the AAU season, the college, I mean, NBA season, college basketball season. Uh, but I know personally that you would you was looking forward to this summer. Oh man, it was it was it was, it was an epic summer for me man, personally. You were looking forward to this summer. You had took a, a, a I won't say a giant leap, but you took a leap. You took a leap and you branched out. You branched out and you started you started your own started your own team, uh, which is still which is still in affiliation with TJ Ford basketball. But you branched out and went and went back. Uh, to Baytown to start a team. Tell me, tell me what what inspired that, man. Uh, well, what, what really inspired it, we we try we both from we from two communities, right? So when we grew up, we was in Baytown for a long period of time, but we also moved to Missouri City, right? So if you look at how old I am, I was in, I was in both spots for the same amount of time. So I felt like we was doing the best we could in the in the in the Missouri Mo City area and the surrounding areas of Houston, but. It was always hard for us to get back to what we what we started from, you know. So I just wanted to make sure that we brought team forward to give the kids in Baytown, Mount Bellevue, anyone on the east side the same opportunity that we was giving the kids in the Houston area. So I just felt like I had a look. I learned the game from my brother, my sister. She helped me a lot with the business side. So I feel like I had enough to go ahead and give these the the people in Baytown a fair shot, you know, at a platform. And uh, so far, you know, we have a team. They've been doing pretty good. They won two championships. And I just thank the parents because the parents believe in what I was talking about, you know. Right before I came over the team, I was training the kids and how it came about. But it came all about from the parents, you know. So I want to personally thank Daniel. Um, Daniel Barton, he came to me and said, you should try you should it. So I think that it's working out. We're going to expand. I think that uh, it's going to help a lot of kids. And just like with the kids there, They'll get an opportunity to go to the TJ Ford Academies and mix in with the other guys. It won't just be them playing there and they won't get the mix in. We're taking them and trying to show them what they'll be facing. Because a lot of those kids don't come into the city. They just stay, you know, everybody stays local. So now we 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 showing that it's where me and TJ came from, there's a lot more talent there. And you just gotta go back and help, you know. So what we try to do there is to bring the culture back and just trying to help them with the fundamentals from the ground up. Like I said, I started with seventh grade team because I wanted to start young and I wanted to bring them to high school knowing the proper way to play. And I don't that don't mean I don't think other people train kids the proper way. I you know, me and my family see a game a certain way and, and we teach the game from you know from our experiences, not to take away from anybody else. Um so I think it's been huge. I think that uh it's gonna be I think it's, it's you know back because the kids they didn't get a chance to go to TJ for invitational. They didn't get a chance to go they were supposed to go see they was actually supposed to go play in the Kobe Bryant tournament and uh uh one of the before they got to leave. Uh my team for Houston team before they got to leave, I canceled, you know what I mean? So they didn't get that experience. So it's like uh it's been tough, but at the same time, I think that when we get all the way back together, I think that it's gonna be a beautiful thing. I think that my dad loved it, I think that my family loved it, and I also think a lot of people get the chance to see me back there. They get to touch and feel me. You know, it's a lot of seeing me on the internet or at the tournaments, but now they get to see me. I go there twice a week, and it really just touches bases with my hometown. And it's it's, it's been beautiful, to be, to be honest. With you. Man, I know. Like I said, I, I know, man. You, I know you're proud of of getting that started and and the early success you've had with the kids. And, and you and, and I've seen some of the kids, and and you have, you do have some talent there, and it's only going to continue to grow. You know, this is this has really been the first year, so to speak. Uh, and it's still fairly new, man. And I'm I'm proud and happy for you, man, because you know I, I, when you talk about it, I you know I, I see the excitement, I see the the pride you take in. I mean, you take pride in just about everything you do. So right. 
I see the pride you take in, you know, being able to go back to the, you know, to your, to your real, to your, to your original roots, man. And, you know, and start something and, and build and be building something from, from Bay, the Bay town, the Bay town. What, what's the other area, the Bay town? And what's the so other? Team, basically the, when I, it's team Ford, when you look up on Instagram, it's team for Bay area and the Bay area, we call it Bay area in, in, in Bay town is like Laporte, Bear Station, Crosby, you know, Deer Park, all that going back that way. Magnet, Baytown, any part of that community. My, uh, we talking about how we we'll take anyway. It's like all the surrounding areas in that in that um, area. We trying to help those kids because you don't get to see a lot of those kids. You got to think about it. A lot of people not trying to doing traffic time and, and, and get to Houston. So a lot of those kids platform, but they yeah, you know. So with TJ Ford, with TJ Ford brand, we trying to venture out so we can see as much talent as we can. We don't want to limit our up to just one area, you know. So we not only TJ Ford and Team Ford, we gonna we gonna spread it out wherever there's people that's willing and committed to help the kids. And that's what it's about, man. At the end of the day, I mean, that's what the whole giving back in the AU. That's what it's about. Yeah, we want to have the you know it's it's great to have some of the best kids, but at the end of the day, man, you're just trying to see kids grow and be better, become grow into young men, young men grow into you know grow into men see these kids off to college and get and get you know get a scholarship of some sort whether it's D1 D2 NAI you know you just trying to help these kids get a scholarship to further their uh to further their careers at the at the basketball level and academic level you know to try to better themselves to have a better chance of being successful in life and it's and it's it's a life it's a life skills lesson you know basketball is a, you know basketball allows you to experience a many different things man in life and and to to be around different people and, and and to see different places and experience different things. So it's it's plenty of life lessons in, in a team sport. So, uh, like I said, man, a, a lot of kids are are missing out on on a lot this summer. But you know, it's it's an unfortunate situation for everyone across the board. Like I said, man, I, I appreciate you joining me. No, for sure. I appreciate you. I appreciate you giving me the the platform. Um, like I told you. Before, what you're doing is helping us in a big way because you lending your ears, you're giving the people the information that they might also um, bring in a platform for guys like myself that just want to help kids and uh, help develop kids on and off the court. So anytime you, you want me, I'm here for you. And uh, I just appreciate what you're doing. And I'm looking forward to seeing you back on the TV when we get back going. Oh, man, I appreciate it. Hey, but... Last thing before we get out of here, let the people know where they can where they can find you at, you know, for, for all whatever, for TJ okay. Ford basketball, bait, yeah. um, training and all that. Okay. Uh, TJ, mo mostly everything I do today with my brother TJ Ford. So you look on TJ Ford basketball, um, I'm always going to keep you updated on what's going on and what I got going on. Um, I got my F2 kennel. That's F and a 2 kennel. That was a personal – that used to be a hobby of mine when I was young. I turned it into a business. Um, you can look it up. It's F2 Kennel, like I said before. Got American Bullies, Frenchies. And what I would like to say about that is um, sometimes you can take something you're passionate about and uh, you can turn into a business. Turn into a business. If you really love it, it really don't feel like work. So a lot of times that's what I do with my spare time. I, I breed dogs. And I show dogs. And that's, like my, that's like my relief, you know. I want to go out and get my stress off. I play with animals. Other people got other things they do. You know, and that's the thing that I love. So my point to that is, kids, it don't, it don't really matter what you choose to do. As long as that you love it and you believe in it, you stick to you do what you do best. And uh, the sky's the limit for you. I'm a, a firm believer of that. Uh, just like my brother made it to NBA, you know, people uh, always may have thought, well, he should do this and he should do that. Or you, even yourself, these people have a perception of what you think you should do. But I would tell anybody, as long as you sleep well at night, and you love what you do, you're successful. You know what I'm saying? You take care of your family, you're successful. And uh, I just, like I said, I, I get to talk to successful people like you, TJ, all the guys y'all call me on conference calls with. I've been blessed. Man, unmeasurable uh, blessings. And I'm just trying to get back to what I learned from all you guys. I'm just trying to get back. So like I said, I appreciate it. And just let me know when you need me again, baby. Now, what's your, what's your IG and your Twitter information? Okay, my um, on my Twitter, I'm, I'm Coach Tim Ford on Twitter, and uh, on my personal uh, my personal Instagram is my nickname Charlie, so it's C H A L I underscore T, 
and that's where you can see more about my family and things that I do besides basketball. Because I do have a life outside of basketball, and that's where you can kind of see what I do with my family. You know what I mean? So I appreciate that, D. No doubt, man. Appreciate you being on, bro. Okay, baby. One love.